Did, uh, did any of you guys have one of these when you were a baby, by chance? Let me raise it up higher. I'm kind of sitting down low here tonight. Anybody have one of these when you were a kid? When you were a baby? Maybe you were swaddled in it from a time or two? Um, I didn't particularly have a security blanket when I was a child. Um, I had a security bear. Um, so later this past month I looked him up and I took a DNA sample of him and uh, I went on to Ancestry.com to check and see where he was located and um, apparently I adopted him from Walgreens. Um, his heart was red, it was not a white color. His eyes were pearly black color. He had a lot more fur, if you haven't noticed, and his nose was black. It was my form of, of safety. It was my form of security. It was my form of protection. But to Jesus, he had a blanket. His blanket was security. And blankets, they can be a form of security. They can be a form of warmth. They keep us warm at night at times, right? They come in all shapes, they come in all colors, they come in all sizes. You can get them by weight, you can get them however you want. So that they are a form of protection and comfort for you. And that's what I love about the video that we watched at the beginning. Have you ever seen that movie before, Charlie Brown? I had to take some time to watch that video this uh, past week. And I love that simplicity that Linus had. Um, about the blanket and, and all of that stuff. So if you watch the whole video of Charlie Brown, the time that happened before, Charlie Brown was trying to get all of his friends together to have this wonderful, most perfect, beautiful Christmas Eve service. Like we're doing today. And he couldn't get anybody to listen to him. He, he just couldn't get him to understand. It was complete. Chaos. He couldn't get them to sit and do their lines. All they wanted to do was dance. They were singing this piano. They were just dancing. Dun, 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 dun. You never heard that before? Okay, go ahead and watch the movie again. And so, at this point in time, Charlie Brown, he got frustrated. He couldn't, he couldn't listen to, to anymore. And he just asked everybody. He said it so simple. What? is Christmas about? Doesn't anybody understand what Christmas is about? And then Linus spoke up. And this is what he recited. He, he said a few words out of the Gospel of Luke chapter 2. And he said, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. They were keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests. So over these past few, few, excuse me, over the past four weeks, we've been breaking down Christmas as simple as possible. We wanted to narrow it down to its simplest form. And we looked at Joseph, the husband of Mary, the, the father, soon to be father of Jesus. We looked at the hero of the story, which is who? Okay, we're going to work on that tonight. Uh, the hero of the story and of the entire Bible is Jesus Christ. Alright? We looked at this 400 years of silence where God spoke to nobody before the birth. And then yesterday we talked about the shepherds and, and them spreading the news of a Savior that, who had been born tonight. And each part, it plays such an important role in this celebration that we're having this evening. And none of it and, and I mean, none of it would have been possible if only one of those entire people in the entire story said no. Look with me for a minute at verse 12 in Luke chapter 2. It says this, it says, This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes 
and lying in a manger. We kind of overread that sometimes, right? Because it's, it's what you do with a baby, right? You wrap him in clothes, in swaddling clothes, you put him in a manger. So why is this a sign? Why does it say that this will be a sign to you? Some translations say, actually, that it was swaddling clothes that he was wrapped in. So, here's the reason why. There's this tradition that happens uh, with shepherds. And when they're shepherding their sheep, they take the lambs that are without blemish. And they wrap them in clothes. And they place the lamb, this brand newborn lamb, in a manger. Away from all of the other sheep. So it would not get any blemishes on them. And what they would do is they would take these lambs and they were supposed to be a temple sacrifice for the Passover. You see, the shepherds understood that. They got that the swaddling baby was a sign. And so they went and they wanted to see if it was true. And they found the Savior, Christ the Lord. He was wrapped just like they wrapped their own lambs at birth. And so tonight, here's what I want you to do. Start looking for a sign. What's God trying to say to you tonight? Through all of this, it gets to be busy, right? We have lots of things up here. It's typically not like that. And we jokingly said we're trying to keep things simple, but it sure does look busy up there, doesn't it? Where's he asking you to go? What's he asking you to do? What's that one thing, that one most important thing that God's asking you to do tonight? In scripture, we always talk about Jesus being the great shepherd. Listen to what Jesus told the Jews in John chapter 10. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So, when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and he runs away. He knows he's not responsible. Then the wolf attacks the flock and it scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and he cares nothing for the sheep. Then Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them in also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Amen. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down my own, on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and the authority to take it up again. And this command I received from my Father. You see, this is significant and important because Jesus, in talking to the Pharisees and the Jews in this particular moment, he proves a point here. You see, yesterday and the past weeks, we talked about how shepherds were the lowest of the low class. Nobody listened to them. They were, they were sketchy people and nobody understood them. But the Pharisees, on the other hand, were looked highly of. They got to this place of authority. And they went through this rigorous process to get to this position. They loved being called a Pharisee. But they didn't see the sign that was right in front of them. They were so worried about their status that they completely missed the whole entire point. They weren't listening. You see, shepherds, they know their sheep. And the sheep, they know them. Shepherds never force their sheep to move or drink or eat, but they guide them to the right path to get food to, drink, to eat and water to drink. These shepherds who came to see Jesus knew that this was going to be special because of what the angel had told them. And just like a swaddled lamb is so special to a shepherd, a swaddled baby is even more special. So listen to God tonight, just like the shepherds did. Trust God. And just like we talked about yesterday, celebrate Jesus. This is why we came here tonight, to celebrate the birth of Jesus and every other night. 
Because friends, listen to this. You don't want to miss this part right here. Don't fall asleep on me yet. We did it early so y'all wouldn't fall asleep, okay? This is not a midnight mass or service, all right? Sorry, I grew up Catholic. I still call it mass sometimes. <laughs> don't miss out on this right here, right now. We celebrate Jesus tonight because it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning of the road to freedom, to, to a glorious eternal life. So here's what I want to do tonight. Will the ushers uh, please come down? We're going to light uh, your candles. If you have a candle, if you don't have a candle, let us know. Um, if you don't have teen behind your um, age, then you don't get one. That was a joke. <laughs> 13, behind your age. Jesus, he said to his disciples in John chapter 8, verse 10, he said, I am the light of the world, and whoever follows me, he will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. You see, lights are important to us, just as they were to Jesus. They remind us of things. They're significant of things. We pray things for them. They light up the darkness. So when you have these candles, when we light them this evening, I ask that you remember something that it signifies to you. If it's Jesus, then let it be Jesus. If it's something else in your life, then please think of something else. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you so much for the birth of your son. Father, I, I ask that um, you come before us right now as we light these candles. I pray that you um, soften our hearts, that you soften our minds, Father, that we may be attentive and listening to what it is that you want us to hear tonight. Father, I thank you so much for the simplicity of Christmas. Most importantly, Father, I thank you for your son. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Hey, Pastor Brian here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to check us out in person, you can come to two of our service times. One is at 8 a.m. and it is a traditional service. You can also see us at 10.30 a.m., which is a contemporary service. And we have 9.15 Sunday School in the middle. You can also check us out online. We have a Facebook page, an Instagram page, both under the name Riverton Christian Church. And you can also visit our website, which is www.rivertoncc.org. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.